We study smart urban intermediaries because the concept of smartness is being related to smart cities and that's mostly in relation to technology and digital society. What we do is understanding smart urban intermediaries not as technological devices but as being socially smart, being able to connect with citizens, residents um, and people in the neighborhoods to make a substantial difference. With smart urban intermediaries, we try to conduct field work in four different cities in Europe, Amsterdam, Birmingham, Copenhagen and Glasgow. And in those four sites, we try to understand what it means to make a very substantial difference in deprived neighborhoods. We think it's important to understand and value what these people do, how to do it, and also to make it more visible what they are doing. We are here in Krakow now, and more specifically, we are in Nova Huta, a really interesting neighborhood that has been constructed during the 60s and 70s and share many of the same challenges and interesting stuff that's going on as the other cities, Amsterdam, Birmingham, Glasgow and Copenhagen. To share perspectives, to talk about what is important for these Swiss and, uh, and also to hear about the police experiences and uh, to hear about inspiring projects. And we are already started and I'm, I'm full of good ideas to bring home. One of the key learning points for me yesterday for the visits was uh, the wisdom that Suis bring to, to their practice. And in particularly, there was a case where we were talking about the group in uh, Nova Huta. And what began as an exploration of social history and political history and evolved into photography, that developed into people making those photographs into large scale prints. Having done that, they then asked themselves, well, what can we do with these prints? Because they were all made in materials. Somebody was wise enough then to say, right, let's actually cut those up and make uh, reusable uh, carrier bags for them. Um, and in doing that, what they recognised was they needed to bring together people that not only knew how to sew, but access their sewing machines. So in that way, they were bringing together assets in the community. And for me, that just embodies the wisdom of Suez and how they harness together strengths, assets, complex ideas for the betterment of the community and the people that live in it. The thing that fascinated me the most was how people organized when there was like no strong municipality around them, how they organized them themselves. It's a, it's a point of view that I really am fascinated and, and, and interested in learning more about because this whole thing that you can organize and, and, and not, not so much just focusing on the buildings and the surroundings but more about the people and how they interact, that was very inspiring and something that I'm going to take back to uh, Copenhagen and continue working on. I'm really happy to see and to talk to people from many different countries how they work in the area and what they actually do to make it a better place, to try to understand how different countries have different rules about where can you get the money for the stuff you want. It's a challenge, but it's uh, giving a lot of hope because even when you have different ways to do stuff, it's always the person on the ground who started. All the time we're in a hurry because, you know, in Poland there is the time that people want to earn money and they concentrate on this. Sometimes it's difficult to, to propose them something else. We rush too, too much and now when we can slowly meet somebody on event, it's a value for me. And uh, here is um, a lot of inspiring people. We're talking about trust uh, and celebration because uh, we see the lack of trust in uh, communities. We see a lack of celebration in our organization. We should celebrate more uh, because uh, this is a good way to close the project, to create more bonding with people and uh, to go to the next step. It's interesting to hear about their stories and experiences. So we are talking about what motivates you, that sometimes it's a particular cause, but then it turns into be more altruistic motives. No, you can't force people into the altruism if their interest, their starting point, is here. We talked about the motivation and the first motivation was altruism and I think it's common, yeah, because I know a lot of people who uh, involved in, uh, in, in 
events, in some public uh, affairs, to uh, because they are altruists, they want to do something for other, because they feel that they should. You know, it's internal that you have this kind of drive to, to that uh, carries you uh, you to to do. Uh, things for others. We've had the most extraordinary couple of days, the heat's been quite intense. We've been to various cultural centres and areas that were clearly very, very architecturally Soviet. And what's been really interesting is the way that the Polish communities here have reclaimed those buildings. We then went to this incredible sort of library space where you could get a coffee, you could borrow a book, you could buy a book. It was also an information centre for the local for the local people, so although it was a tourist centre, it was very much for the local people about what was available to them. That was pretty funny, we were walking around in Nova Huta, just outside Krakow, and I walked straight into my own dream. See one of my own dreams for my area in Copenhagen have come alive here in Krakow. We can go home and go on with our plans and continue because it is possible to do it. There's commonalities throughout everything. We've got a rise of populism, we've got a rise of the right wing. Uh, we're living in quite kind of challenging times. There's a lot of fear around. Um, but actually the, the same passion and the same underpinning values and the same issues are coming up for people in Poland. Burnout, um, also reminding ourselves that we are doing good things um, and celebrating those without being arrogant about it. Um, the challenges of of pastoral care, how you build trust in communities, and it seems that trust has been a real echo word throughout um, throughout the last few days. We work with users of um, social services and then with the municipalities and with NGOs together to make a change. But it's really complex if there are not some uh, persons involved like uh, uh, smart urban intermediaries. For me, I think one of the biggest challenges is actually being able to explain in a meaningful way the complexity of what SUEs actually do. That is going to be so important for us in persuading policy setters, funders, at both a government and at a local level to invest in SUEs. Because I think that for me is a foundational step in tackling so many of the problems we see in our communities, not only in Scotland, but here in Krakow as well. The, our Polish collaborators have been great. They've been helping us. They've uh, brought in really inspiring uh, people, both uh, smart urban intermediaries or local leaders, that's, as they call them. What I think was very sort of uh, evident or in the, in the discussions today, to feel that they are not alone, to feel that they have counterparts and that they have kind of allies and friends uh, all over Europe that do the same kind of work in similar ways. Um, and that truly energizes people. I think one of my, my strongest feelings from the last two days is actually being energized by meeting and engaging, not just with SUEs, but with practitioners and academics that are actually studying this. That for me is critical and the fact that everybody else seems to be so energised by the exercise shows that what SUEs do and what this programme is about is so important for us. I got some nice inspirations and uh, I can see that uh, we have a lot of in common and it's very uh, nice to observe it and nice to experience this. It makes me realise that people all over the world actually have the same kind of dreams and people are making those dreams come true.